Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house as we gather for worship and praise today. Uh, today, not only are we gathered for worship, but we have the opportunity to welcome four children uh, from our community, uh, the Allen family, through Holy Baptism into God's family here, so we rejoice at that. Uh, for that portion of the service, which of course will be right after we greet each other, uh, the insert in your bulletin has our baptismal <coughs> liturgy. To start our service, we'll rise and greet one another. Charlie Alexander Allen, 
receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemn the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserve believing Noah and his family, eight souls and all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all of his hosts in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Skyler May, Haley Rose, Summer Mary, and Charlie Alexander according to your boundless mercy, and bless them with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in them which has been inherited from Adam in which they themselves have committed sins would be drowned and die. Grant that they be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise they would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, for ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumenates. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them towards the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Therefore, I ask you, is it your intention to serve Skyler May, Haley Rose, Summer Mary Allen, and Charlie Alexander as sponsors in the Christian faith? Yes, God enable you to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace, Fulfill what we're unable to do. Amen. Here in the Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, they brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray the prayer of our Lord is taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen. Congregation seated. Skyler May Allen, Haley Rose Allen, Summer Mary Allen, Charlie Alexander Allen, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce him. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Yes, I believe. Skyler May Allen, Haley Rose Allen, Summer Mary Allen, and Charlie Alexander Allen, do you desire to be baptized? Yes, I do. All right, we'll come forward. So I parents, you can come on this side, and we'll get you guys to get the kids in here. Yeah. And I'll grab let your dad go over on this side first. Okay? Okay? That's exactly it. Skylar May Allen, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, here. I know. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. There you go. And here, I'll let you hold that. All right. And then. Okay. Hey, Amy, you're going to be next, okay? Can you, can you come up on this? Maybe Mom can give you a hand. Or do you want your godmom to give you a hand? There. Oh, there we go. How's that? Now you're going to turn your head and you're going to bend over. Can we do that? Here, we'll hold you so you don't fall. You can put your hands there. Okay? Let's do that. Okay? Haley Rose Allen, I, bat I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. There you go. Hans, that there. You can hold this if you want. There. All right. All right, Summer, you ready? Oh, did Summer start? There you go, Summer. All right, you ready? Turn, turn. <laughs> She's the biggest one that's been waiting for this. So here, turn toward me, Summer. Turn, turn your head toward me. Here you go. Summer Mary Allen, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Calm down. There you go. And take that. Careful. Awesome. Charlie, you're tall enough. Charlie, you'll just turn your head towards me, Charlie. Look towards me. Look towards my cross. There you go. Charlie Alexander Allen, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks, guys. And here you can hold that. There. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who's given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And you as godparents are going to receive candles to hold for the godchildren. So she's going to light them. And these candles are for you guys that you light on your baptismal birthday to remember it. Okay? Receive this burning light to show that you've received Christ, who's the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end.
We humbly implore you that as they have now become your children, you would keep them in their baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure they may faithfully grow to lead a godly life, to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally with all your saints obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, you sent your own Son into this world as a child of the Virgin Mary. We thank you for the life of these children entrusted to our care. Help us remember that we are at all that we are all your children, and so love and nurture them that they may attain to the full stature intended for them in your eternal kingdom. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord and giver of life, look with kindness upon the father and mother of these children and upon all our parents. Let them ever rejoice in the gift that you have given them. Enable them to be teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism that they may share eternally with their children the salvation you've given them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And peace be with all of you. Amen. And you can return to your spot and you can extinguish your candles. Oh, thank you guys. Go ahead up. And at this time, our LWML representative is going to present gifts to the children. So we have a group here at Church of Ladies called the Lutheran Women's Missionary League of Canada. It's a really long name. But we give gifts to the babies and the kids who are baptized for you guys to use as you grow in your faith. And we are so happy that you are now part of God's family. So congratulations. And Kara's part of the group too, so she's going to give you guys your gifts. We'll join our voices in singing our fifth verse.
pray. Almighty and eternal God, defend your church from all false teaching and error, that your faithful people may confess you to be the only true God, and rejoice in your good gifts of life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament readings from Isaiah 29. And the visions of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men give it to one who can read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read. And the Lord said, because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder. And the wisdom of, to the, of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. Ah, you who hide deep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, Who sees us? Who knows us? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay that the thing made should say to its maker, He did not make me? Or the thing formed say to him who formed it, He has no understanding. It is not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be regarded as a forest. In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom, the darkness and darkness, the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exalt in the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistles from Ephesians 5. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. His body and is himself its Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ in the church. However, that each one of you love his wife as himself, and that the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll rise for our Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is uh, the basis for our message today. When the Pharisees gathered to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written? This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. You need the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, 
you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from me is Corbin, that is given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father and mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things you do. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We as a congregation profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, the God of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, be God not me. Being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We're seated for the hymn of the day.
we pray. Lord, send the Holy Spirit now to work in our hearts and minds to plant, grow, and strengthen our faith in you and our love for one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Last week we heard Joshua lay his cards on the table with the people of Israel. As they were about to go out and establish themselves in the promised land, Joshua reminded them that they have two ways on how they can proceed. He said, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. However, there is a, another path. He said, And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your father served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. And it was after those words that Joshua, he wanted to be crystal clear on what is really the only choice if one is wise. It's where he and his family would stand. He said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, for those that were here last week, you've had a, a week to think about these things. And you've taken the freedom that the Lord has given each and every one of you because the Lord forces or strong arms no one to believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Yet, thanks to the Holy Spirit's work in you, you're here again. You've taken your place among us, or if you're on our live stream, you've tuned back into our service yet again. And for all of us here, your path is set. The Spirit is guiding you. So where and how do we go from here on out? How now we advertise. We advertise our faith and heart. In other words, we, we practice what we preach or do we? Have you ever gone to a store simply because you saw an ad in the paper that said that they were selling just what you were looking for and you get there and you can't find the darn thing? Up and down the aisles you look and nothing. Finally you ask about it, even showing them a picture in the flyer and the worker simply looks at you and says, we don't have any. We never have any. Just because we have them in the ad doesn't necessarily mean we have them in this store. And when you hear that stuff, doesn't it just tick you off? I mean, you feel kind of stupid for trusting the ad and the store. Maybe even you start vowing to yourself or to that poor innocent worker how wrong this is and how you'll never shop here again and I'm going to tell all my friends to avoid this place. Well, you know, unlike the advertisements that have been deceptive, misleading, and let us down, you and I are advertising our confidence, the same confidence that Joshua had. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for He is our God. You see, God desires that the faith that we profess and advertise is, is going to be on the shelf of our heart. And not just on the shelf, but in fact, it's going to be lived out and enjoyed by us each and every day and benefit one another. A faith that is more than just the, the words for the world and, and those around us to hear. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for He is our God. That is the confidence, that is the hope, that is what we desire. But you know, the unfortunate reality is that all too often what God and man finds in his creation is that we can find ourselves tempted and ultimately guilty of false advertising. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord for he is our God. It can have behind it hearts that are, that are far from being loving or practicing loving service to one another and even further from loving service to the Lord. That's what Jesus found in the religious leaders who came to see him from Jerusalem. These religious leaders, they were advertising their faith in God, being his representatives to guide the people out of love. However, in Jesus' and his followers' case, 
guiding out of love was the furthest thing from their minds. They had come to discredit Jesus. And they seized on what was vital to them. A thing that's called works righteousness. In other words, doing something to earn your spot in heaven with God. They believed in that. And they set themselves above others, including God. Putting people in control by man-made rituals and man-made rules. They said that Jesus was ignoring the traditions of the elders. Specifically, Mark said, they, the religious leaders, saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is unwashed. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? It seems that the disciples weren't washing their hands before they ate. And while we would say that's unhygienic and, and that it's probably a smart idea to wash considering all the yuck that we touch every day, while it's a good personal practice to wash, the truth is, is that the Bible doesn't command anything about someone becoming unclean from eating with unwashed hands. But for the leaders, it was all about the show putting on a performance for God and their fellow man, giving the impression that unclean hands are a big sin in God's eyes, and you need to put on a show to cleanse first, show how pure as the driven snow you can be like us, was what they said. So the leaders started calling man-made traditions God's commands, and things that may be good as must be done. Jesus said, no, that's not how it works. That's not how you should work. Your advertisement is a misprint. It's all wrong when you command as God commands what God doesn't. Especially simply to keep people under your thumb, neglecting what's truly important and commanded. Really, the, the religious leaders wanted to put on airs of how holy and righteous they were, and how the people needed to be more like them. It was just all a mask, though, to excuse or hide the evil that they kept in their hearts. Jesus, he knew them to be soiled and filth to the core, no matter how much washing they tried to do. So he unmasked their fake and heartless lip service to God by quoting Isaiah. This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You know, today, when our profession of faith and our outward works are not matched by a, a heart of faith, guided by God's love for man, that's spiritual false advertising. When we do and say all the right religious things because that's what we're supposed to do, or simply because our parents make us, or our spouse wants us to, or our pastor is standing right there, then we hide behind a mask to cover our sinful behavior. And we're guilty of honoring God with our lips while our hearts are far from Him. You know, Scripture reminds us of our struggle. What comes out of a man is what defiles a man. And he said, from within... Out of the heart come evil thoughts, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a man. And that's because we live in a broken and sin-filled world. And we are broken and sin-filled people who contribute to the struggle every day in our thoughts and words and deeds. No amount of hand washing is going to change that. We need help from above. We need a cleansing from the Lord of His forgiveness. And you know, you and I, we are so blessed to have a God who desires our, not just our, our lips, but our actions and our hearts to be cleansed and to belong to Him and advertise as He desires. The Father desires us and our hearts so much 
that he showed heartfelt love again and again to us, even to a people who in the moment are neither looking for nor desiring his love. For the people in Isaiah's day, God said, Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of the discerning men shall be hidden. In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exalt in the Holy One of Israel. You see, throughout Scripture, God holds out hope to the hopeless. He promises equipping and guiding to the weak and the struggling. He promises that we are never alone from his presence or his earshot or his sight. Even in the midst of trials and tribulations and struggles and corrections, that he does allow for a, a reset to our hearts and minds. God loves us so much that he went so far in his desire that our hearts and very beings would belong to him that he sent his son Jesus to, to this sin-filled world so that Jesus could give his life in his suffering and death on the cross at Calvary. There, Jesus suffered and died for us. He paid for our straying and heartless moments, our times of simple lip service, and false advertising. When our hearts are far from him in sin, Jesus willingly surrendered his life and death so that you and I would have forgiveness and life now and the assurance of eternal life with him one day. And I mean, even now, our Lord is coming to his children, to you and to me. Through his word, as we just witnessed, through baptism, in his holy supper, he comes to guide us, to equip us, to strengthen us, allowing the Holy Spirit to do his work of making us holy in our lips, our actions, and in our advertising of our faith that we hold on to. You know, God loves each and every one of you. He loves us too much to allow us to, to wear our faith as nothing more than a mask to hide any false advertising. Through his word of forgiveness, through his working of grace and mercy, he is creating in each one of us a people of his own possession. Children of the Heavenly Father who hold on to him, who live out under his care, who share and advertise the love of God found in Jesus our Lord. And that's how we proceed, advertising him, sharing the faith that we have come to know. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds clinging and sharing in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, the offering will be brought forward. As it's brought forward, we'll sing our offertory prayer. <laughs> Strengthen us for hard conversations 
so that we pass on the most important thing we have ever been given, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our Lord, don't allow the corrupt and evil ways of the world get a foothold in our lives. Empower us to believe, trust, and cling to you. Strengthen our faith and our resolve each day. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our Lord, we lift up our world's conditions right now, the ongoing struggles with leadership, the tension between countries, fires, floods, earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, and all the other afflictions in this life. We live in a broken and sin-filled world. These things just remind us of the struggles. May your hand guide, be felt, and strengthen those walking through these days. Provide help and support as you know is needed. Lord, in your mercy, Jesus, you bore our grief and shared in our sorrows. Bring your comfort to all who are suffering in any way. We especially lift up uh, John and David and Jeffrey and all those who mourn the loss of Gloria. We lift up Vanessa. We lift up Susan. We lift up all in our hearts. Bring healing as you know is best. Uplift them with your strength to bear in these moments. Point them to the hope that is ours now and the assurance of the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, we can strive to lift ourselves up at the cost of putting others down. The temptation is all too real to twist and tell lies about our neighbor. Send your spirit to work in us a desire to defend one another. Speak well of them and explain everything in the kindest way. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, we rejoice with those celebrating birthdays, baptismal birthdays, and anniversaries this week. We thank you for the blessings of the past and entrust them to your future care. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, provide what is best, what is needful, and what will be beneficial. We entrust all things to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion, hear Luther's admonition. I exhort you in Christ that you give attention to the testament of Christ in true faith. And above all, take to heart the words with which Christ presents his body and blood to us for forgiveness. That you take note and give thanks for the boundless love that he showed us when he saved us from the wrath of God, sin, death, and hell by his blood. And that you then externally receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a guarantee and pledge. Let us then in his name, according to his command, and with his own words, administer and receive the testament. <laughs>
in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. <laughs> Concerning Holy Communion, read on the inside cover of the bulletin. 